प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पल पन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह कन्शाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑलमाइटी आर बलवीर गन्शाम महाराज the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swaminari. Just had observed this very, you can say, display of violence. He saw these two servants aim and shoot and fire at birds and kill the birds. He was not even part of such kind of an act. He was just an eyewitness. Yet, due to seeing such pain number one he performed the kalyan of these two birds and number two he observed the fast just think about how much Maharaj has such a compassionate nature that he performed a fast just by upon just seeing and displaying that two birds had died in front of him by the gunshots of the two servants of the king. Bhagwan Swaminarayan states his nature, his inclination, his be, his most inner principles, his behavior in the Vachnamrut, Kudra middle 60th, that I would like to share with you today. Maharaj himself is saying, Sriji Maharaj said, I am very compassionate, like Dattatre, Jad Bharat, Narad, and Sukhji. In fact, once, while I was traveling in the east, I came across a band of aesthetics. They ordered me, go and pick some green spinach. I replied, I will not pick it, because it too contains a jeev. Hearing this, one of them drew a sword and threatened me. Nevertheless, I did not pick the spinach. This is the extent of my compassionate nature. However, if one looks angrily at a devotee of God, then even if that person is a relative of mine, I feel like tearing his eyes out. And if he should hurt a devotee of God with his hands, I feel like cutting his hands off. Such an aversion I experience in those cases. I do not show any compassion. Only one who has such loyalty for a devotee of God can be called a full-fledged devotee of God. Maharaj said that he was asked to pick spinach, yet because it contains a soul, he did not do it. He refrained from doing it. That's how much of a compassionate nature Maharaj possesses. Yet we can see from this prasang here that even two birds that fell to their death by bullet shots in front of Nilkanvarni struggling and screaming for their life attained Kalyan but nonetheless Maharaj himself observed a waterless fast there is a prasang in Puja Guruji's life which similarly goes along that I would like to share you know Puja Guruji has such a strong inclination of following Bhagwan's each and every agna that from my personal experience, I have not ever displayed or seen a sadhu with such kind of strong and firm niyams, except for Puja Guruji. From the smallest of the smallest kriya or action to the most, you can say, biggest action, Puja Guruji's nature of following each and every agna of Maharaj is ad admirable, nonetheless very, very faithful 
because only one who has faith can follow such kind of agna of Maharaj. You know, at one time, Puja Guruji was there. Um, it was a simple uh, incident. Foundation work was going out in the Kandari Gurukul um, organization of the school building. And Guruji was observing it from afar. Now the workers there, they were digging the foundation of the building. And the cobras there must have been going around the area and the workers killed the cobras on purpose because they knew that it was dangerous and if they got bitten then they would die observing this Buddha Guruji himself observed two waterless fast due to killing the two cobras nonetheless that's a small incident but there was another foundation work going on at the new building and Puja Guruji was sitting and observing the work. It was the day of Ekadasi and Puja Guruji had a waterless fast. As Puja Guruji was sitting on a chair underneath a mango tree, a small insect must have came on and landed on his left hand while he was sitting there. Now Puja Guruji did not saw the insect but did not care much because there's always insects there flying around and they go off and there's not a problem but this insect started to bite Puja Guruji and blood started to come out Puja Guruji tried to fly it off but could not do it so he used his hand to kind of try to rub it off and there the insect fell to the ground immediately and it was at its last stage Puja Guruji noticed this and picked the insect up and started to chant the Mahamantra Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. While chanting, he also gave the Vratmans. You know, just like how when we are about to wear a kanti uh, for the first time and make a uh, make an, uh, guru, uh, there's, a, there's a verse that comes that we have to repeat that same verse kaad karma maya pap that verse was said to uh, the insect Guruji was saying it and then it let it free and then it was released and eventually it went to Bhagwan's dham akshar dham but after that Puja Guruji observed a waterless fast along with performed 51 madas for the soul of that insect. Think about it, even the smallest insect. Maharaj himself in the Vachnamrut says, All my devotees, sorry, in the Shikshapatri says, All my devotees should never kill any living beings in any circumstances. Even one should not kill small insects like bugs, lice, ants. Shikshapatri, verse number 11. Puja Guruji remembered this, that this is the Agna of Maharaj. And also, Maharaj also possesses the same compassionate nature. Due to that, he, absor he observed the fast and also performed 51 maras for a small insect. Think about it. While walking on the way to school, or while playing with our friends in uh, a grass field, how many insects have we killed? Or, not, maybe not unknowingly, but maybe even knowingly, how many flies have we swatted? How many cockroaches have we smashed? If we think about it, then we have to do more Mara than Puja Guruji. That's how much violence we have actually performed in our life without even noticing that it is Bhagwan's Agna not to kill even the smallest insect. Puja Guruji himself observed this Vrat observed this Agna of Maharaj throughout his life even till today we can see yes someone can maybe very much have the awareness and not kill any kind of insects but Puja Guruji is so cautious that he doesn't even hurt a devotee or a non-devotee through thought word and deed according to Bhagwan's Agna in the Vachnamrut and that's why we can see 
daily, day to day, in Puja Guruji's life, Maharaj is there with him, constantly doing his works. Because Puja Guruji observes Maharaj's each and every agna to the utmost. So, back to our story. On that day, Nogan observed a fast. He did not go to the city again, but spent the whole day in the garden. His heart was greatly moved with compassion. He could not bear any sort of violence. This was Maharaj's uh, nature. And even in the Shikshapatri, after about maybe 20 years, when he writes the Shikshapatri himself, he states in Shikshapatri verse number 12 that my disciples should never perform sacrificial ceremonies by killing goats or other living creatures to appease deities and ancestors because sastras have proclaimed non-violence as the highest form of dharma. Maharaj, after extracting all of the essence of many, many scriptures of Hinduism, he takes all those essences and puts them into 212 verses and out of those 212 verses, this verse, Maharaj states that Sastras have proclaimed non-violence as the highest form of Dharma. Meaning, the highest form of Dharma is, you can say, rules, code of conduct, that means Dharma. The highest, the number one top, you can say, form of Dharma is not to perform violence not physically only but through word deed and thought three ways when such a person such a devotee of god observes in this fashion then he is to said that he possesses the attribute of nonviolence if he only has thought and word but not deed then his vrat of nonviolence is not complete. Only when all three of these are in synchronous, then it could be said that a devotee of God has observed just one vrat has attained the attribute of nonviolence. So in our day-to-day -day life, we can understand that if we hurt a devotee of God by saying something bad to them, or if we physically do something or if we even think bad about another person, then we are indirectly performing or directly performing violence, which Bhagwan does not like. And we can see this through his charitra here. Two small birds were killed by two servants. Yet, he just observed this incident, but performed a fast. This was Maharaj's nature. And there is one thing that's for sure. We may never become like God because Bhagwan is only Bhagwan. There is no one like God. He is supreme. There is no one else that's next to Him or even above Him. But definitely, there is one thing about Bhagwan that He holds credit to us for. First, I'm going to give you an example here on this earth. Those who go to college, they have that system for the first year as freshman year of dorming. Dorming meaning staying on campus. Now suppose you have a dorm and you have one dorm, in that dorm you have one other person that you have to select to stay with for that semester. Now thinking about that, if you like something different and the person that you select likes something different then that relationship is not going to last very long but those whose inclination those whose nature those who uh, possess the same kind of attributes if they were to select each other then they would feel it even more and more you can say uh, feel excited to stay with one another and even not only for one semester but even for all those four years because both of those 
people possess the same attributes, possess the same nature. In the same way, Akshardham is Bhagwan's home. Akshardham is the home of Bhagwan along with his countless muktos. All those muktos who have attained Akshardham also possess similar natures just like Bhagwan does. There is no one that can completely 100% match everything because Bhagwan is limitless. But for sure, to a certain extent, to a certain percentile, those muktos have attained attributes by the grace of Bhagwan that they are able to stay there and Bhagwan and them engage with one another in deep devotion and enjoy each other's company. In the same way, Bhagwan is helping us here understand that I have stated my nature in the Vachnamrut, such as the one that we just read, Gadda Middle Chapter 60th, Gadda Middle Chapter 13th, such kind of different Vachnamruts. Bhagwan himself states his nature. Our goal is by associating with the Ekantik Satpurush, by performing his Samagam, to develop these kinds of attributes by his grace and from that when we leave this human body and our soul goes to Akshadham we would be able to stay there with Bhagwan happily that is why we are performing such kind of satsang that is why Bhagwan wants us to perform such kind of devotion Bhagwan wants us to have us attain such kind of natures so that him and us get along with one another just like how that college incident that I just mentioned earlier moving on at midnight he suddenly woke up a thought casually passed through his mind let the city be burned now Maharaj would never think like this but you'll see at the end of this uh, Prasang, why Maharaj had thought about this. Maharaj thought, let this city be burned, and Nilkan decided to leave the city, but immediately after this, he withdrew that thought, saying to himself, no, a sadhu should be forgiving. He should not even harbor a thought which may cause harm to anyone. Maharaj was living a life of a sadhu at that time in the form of Nilkan Verni when he arrived at Lodge until he was given the or be, until he became the successor of Ramanand Swami which was just a role and he started to lead the Swaminarayan Sampradaya and spread it he was playing the role of a sadhu and throughout his life Maharaj did play such a role but especially at these tender ages of 11 21 Maharaj giving us the example of a sadhu gave us the thought that a sadhu should be forgiving and Puja Guruji he also possesses such kind of a nature that we can see it's like just like how Santa Claus possesses a big bag of gifts that he goes around and gives to kids and kids yet it's countless it's boundless the bag never becomes empty in the same way, his great Maharaj's great Ekantik Satpurush possesses the attribute of forgiveness and has a big bag full of letters of forgiveness that he gives and gives and gives and never becomes tired. His bag never goes empty because that is the true nature of a sadhu. And Maharaj is saying here that a sadhu is forgiving always. But as a result of his first casual utterance, the city of Bansi went up into flames. Maharaj is Maharaj. The god of fire had already set a flame from the heavens. The fire started from the king's palace and rapidly spread to the whole city. There was a great commotion. The king 
the queen and all the citizens began to flee the city. When Milken saw this, he felt compassion for the citizens. Instantly, he plunged into the waters of the river, and with that, the fire was extinguished. Only the two servants who had killed the birds were burned to death. The city was saved from being reduced to ashes. Since such an incident occurred, as a result of his casual utterance, Milken stood in the water of the river and, taking a little water in the palm of his hands, took an oath and uttered a curse, uttered a curse on his own speech. If ever again such an impure thought passes through my mind, even by mistake, let it be let it not be fruitful. Let my words on such an occasion fail to bear any fruit. After his bath and meditation, Nilkin continued his journey. This was a story of how Nilkin Verney and how he possessed the nature of nonviolence, how he possessed the nature of compassion, and how he had such care for each and every being, even animals, that whoever he encountered they became allured by his divine persona so from this we can learn from the life of Nilkan Verni that in our day-to-day -day life when we come to satsang on a weekly basis or even in school we should not perform such kind of violence through thought word or deed to anyone because Bhagwan possess this nature and Bhagwan likes this nature and also Bhagwan is happy upon those who serve the devotees of God by thought word and deed and do not perform any kind of violence through thought word and deed saying this my humble Jason